Hello there, very good morning to you. Sorry a little bit late this morning. Um, had difficulty connecting to YouTube as well as Facebook, but we should be there now. So hello everybody, good morning. Um, lots of you here already on Facebook. In fact, 349, just like that. Welcome along, happy May Day. Hope you're having a lovely day so far. Um, it was first, oh, loads of comments already. That's amazing. Um, from oh Sarah's first one in today. Hi Anne, I'm skipping a few because we've got loads already. Um, hi Glow and Dawn um, and Irene, what are you going to make with it? Can't wait to see pictures. Um, that's Sue, do we have anybody on YouTube yet? Because I can't see any comments there at all. So so I'm just just having a fiddle around a minute while I try and find you because I think it's rude not to comment when you comment, so to speak. So just bear with me a second while I try and find you to say hello. Um, not going to be here off for an awful long time this morning because I'm live at half past 12 on the Search Pass Facebook page as well. So I've got to, got a bit of prep to do. I was, I was a little late with it this morning, I have to say. Um, where are we? Are we live on YouTube? Apologies if you're all saying hello, but I can't see anybody. Where's my channel? There we are. Are we live? Oh, there we go, I've got the wrong thumbnail up. Yes, that's it, right, let me just do that. Do that. Sorry, I should have done all this beforehand, really. Um, we'll do that and... Oh, you're down there, lovely. Okay, on YouTube we have... Um, oh gosh, lots of you. Um, Shirley and Sandra and Mandy, hello. Um, Lizzie's there, I'm glad you found me. Um, S.A. McAlpine is in Toronto. Hello, and Anne's in Australia, and Cheryl's in Pennsylvania. Oh, we're so multinational here. Um, Jen is in Australia as well. You two should get together because it's only a small place, isn't it? Um, right, let me just get up to scratch with everybody. And then there's, I, I just want to give you um, a couple of pointers about the Half Yard Club. Um, in a second as well because there's some features on there that people have been asking about that um, I haven't shown you yet. Um, I just want to show you really quickly, I'm going to go and show you one bundle off the website because I'm really excited about this because this is brand new today, it's our May Day bundle. Um, last week we brought you a bundle of five one metre pieces of fabric in pastels. Um, they sold out within about two hours so we've managed to get hold of some one metre pieces of lovely bright colours. So one meter by 140, 100% cotton. It's great to use on its own as rainbow fabrics, to use as blenders. If you've got pattern fabric like what I'm going to be using today to make my bag, then these are going to be ideal. But there's an awful lot of fabric there. I think they're 29.99 and literally just gone on the website this morning. So that, that's all I'm going to talk about, websites and all that kind of thing. That's on um, debbyshawsewing.com. Don't forget, if you are a club member, you get your 10% discount. All right, let me move you out of the way there, and we'll do a really quick... Um, hello to Maria in, in Portugal, and uh, hi, Hazel. Another one in Australia, that's Amanda. And Eve is in Virginia. Hello, Leslie. Could spend hours just doing this all morning, couldn't I? Just saying hello and having a chat to everybody. One is Dea, says Marilyn, from sunny Alicante. Um, oh, and Buenos Aires from uh, Laura in Mexico as well. You should Buenos Aires together, shouldn't you? Um, happy May Day, says Joyce. Um, Doris is in New Jersey in USA. Who else is that in Australia? It's evening in Australia, says Christine. And Louise is in a very wet south of France. Apparently, we're going to have thunderstorms on Monday. I was listening to the radio this morning. Um, that's going to be a bit of a shame because it's glorious outside at the moment. I don't know about where you are. Well, I do because you keep telling me. Oh, you do see a dragon, Jean. You notice. It is kind of in prime position there, isn't it? It needs a name. Um, we're going to announce uh, in the next newsletter um, for Half Yard Club um, a, a, little bit of, a little bit of fun. So you, if you think of a name for him or her, then do come and let me know. Cute though, isn't it? That's going to be your second project. So you're going to get that one on the 15th of, um, of May. Um, so anybody in the club this morning that's already um, got the pattern for the skirt? So May the 1st, you should have had your email this morning and there it is on the top of the page. We'll have a look at that in just a second. 
um, Jane, if you have a, which code? Is that the code for my website? Can't really say that, can I? Because then everyone's going to use it. But if you go to About Me on the website, it's there, right on the side of the screen. So About Me, when you go to the top of the website, and that's there. What's the pointer thing over my left shoulder? Could that be the dragon? Can't see any of the pointy things, unless it's the picture. Is it the picture? Uh, Doris the dragon. <laughs> that's, that's appropriate, I suppose. Um, oh, Jane, I'm glad you're here as well. Anne's not looked at her email yet. Um, somebody else in Australia, that's Teresa in Brisbane. Hello. Oh, an event, oh, 10 p.m. in Victoria in Australia. Um, Oh, right. Sorry, Kim's just texted me. Um, the May Day Bundle. I'm going to show you again because we can't upload the picture onto the website for some reason. So let me just show you those again. They look like that. Look, it'll say May Day Bundle and something like picture coming soon or something like that. But that's what you're going to get. And again, there are five one metre pieces. So and these are really bright colours. There's bright yellow, green, a royal blue cerise. And you've got that lovely tangerine orange there as well. <laughs> Ditty dragon. I kind of like that one. Dot uh, the thing is, we have a we have a member called Dotty. Um, so I don't know if she'd appreciate being uh, having a dragon named after her. Um, oh, the, the right shoulder, the mice. Those are from another project from um, Half Yard Club. That was a couple of months ago, I think now, with the um, sewing machine um, dust cover. They came with those. Um, it's the dragon's tail. Oh, I can see all of it here. I can see all of it on my screen. Maybe are you watching on the phone and the screen's a bit cut off? Maybe, maybe that's why. Carol's in Melbourne as well. Got lots of you in Australia this evening watching. So lovely to have your company. Anyway, that's that. Um, and again, a couple of things I wanted to show you on the Half Yard Club website before we get sewing. So what I'm going to do, and I hope this works, is this. So when you go on to the website, and this is the new website. We only launched it last week, so this is terribly exciting. Um, the newer features are, there you go, look, there's your new skirt, so that's come on today. I am already logged in on this one, so this is what you're going to see as a, as a member. Um, and when you go on to how to, then you get all of your instructions there and a video. Now there's no um, pattern for this one because you're going to measure yourself, so you know that you're going to get a perfect fit. Now over here on this side, um, you can upload images so you can click to drag and drop or upload images and your images will automatically come up here so the idea is that you put the same images up there as the project so I don't know why I've got medicine bags there but it's nice to see them um, let's have a look at the wonkies because we've got lots of wonky pictures so on the home page that's what you're going to find right so those are the projects that's what's coming up this month the um the second projects that come up immediately are going to be the ones that are taken down let's go on to sewing projects so th sorry these are the ones that are going to be taken down um so the weekend bag is about to come down that means that, that it's over two years old but i've got a little bit of news for you about projects that come down as well so let's go on to these are all categorized as well but if we go on to the wonky house doorstop, lots of you have been putting your own pictures down here as well. Look at all of these. So you can have, you can upload yours. Look, looks like we've got a whole village going on down there. Look, literally by dragging and dropping your pictures into here, the picture will come up here and then you can post your note like that. And that's how we're going to see your pictures. But what else I wanted to show you while we're here, I won't be long by the way, we're going to be at seven in a minute. Go onto my account. This is where you can edit all of your details. And again, this is very new from last time. So you can add a member picture so we can see what you look like um, when you post um, a, um, a post or anything or a question, then your picture will come up. But here, look, we've got refer a friend. If you refer a friend, all you need to do is go down to the bottom, put in your friend's name and their email address. And if they accept and they become a member themselves, you will receive an ebook 
um, with all of the downloads. There's 12 projects on that that have come down off the site already. So that's our way of saying thank you. We don't post things out um, and all that kind of thing with the club because um, postage would make it so expensive that we wouldn't be able to be kind of international like what we are. Um, so everything's downloaded. So thank you, Sarah. Um, but yeah, that's the that's the new website. So it looks similar to the other one, so it's not too scary. But um, there are lots of new features on there as well. Morning, Cher. Drusilla the Dragon says one day. Morning, Lisa with the spanner. Um, will the skirt be doable for a beginner? Yes, absolutely it will be doable for a beginner. Um, it's probably easier to do it this way than it would be to use a pattern, to be honest. Because you're going to measure yourself. And I think it's nice to have, a, have an understanding of how patterns work and how to make a dart and how to measure where the darts are going to go. Um, there's no fuss with this one. There's no waistband on it. It's faced on the inside. It does have a centre zip at the back and it's got a vent, a vent at the back as well. So you can actually move in it. Um, so I'll show you step by step. How You don't have to put the vent in. Um, I found that after I made up my 12, which you're going to have to do first, um, it was a little bit too narrow for me to walk comfortably, so I thought I'll add the vent. But I'll show you again how to add the piece for the vent on the pattern that you're going to make yourself. Um, I've used a, a stretch denim for this, which is absolutely perfect. And I think you could be making that up in about half a day. So yes, beginners, absolutely, definitely. Thank you very much, Linda. Morning, Dawn. Sue loves me, Cardi. Thank you very much. Right. Um, Dominica in Poland. Hello. Um, oh, the new website is great. But thank you, Ange. I'm glad you like it. Morning, Sam. We were talking about you. We wondered where you were. Um, I am just going to make up a messenger bag. Um, and it's more actually about the sliders and the attachments, I think, because you've seen Bess in your bags before, haven't you? So I'm going to use Painted Faces fabric, which is on the website. Oh, Alex has got a coffee in already. <laughs> we don't do biscuits, Alex. You won't be getting those. Um, oh, Barbara. Barbara in North Italy. Hello. Right. So I've cut these two pieces to... Let me measure them. Whoops. Um... 16 inches by 12 inches and I've put some bosal foam on the back of it. I did say we were going to have a chat about bosal foam at some point, didn't, didn't I? Um, this is it if you haven't seen it before, or well, this is it if you have seen it before for that matter. Um, it will come to you slightly creased up like this. The beauty is, because it'll all be folded when you get it, um, if you give it a blast of steam, all of the crinkles just come out. So don't put your iron on this side, that's the glue side. You've also got a smooth side, so the glue side goes on the back of your fabric and then you can iron from the top with lots and lots of steam to adhere it. And it's nice and soft, so it's easy to sew through, um, but it is um, um, quite sturdy. It's going to give your bag a nice kind of um, solidity, if you like. Morning, Linda in New Jersey. Um, who's going to see an, a nana? Oh, Megan's going to see a, a nana. Um, right, so those two like that. Now the flap, I'm actually going to make the flap in the same fabric. And I'll tell you the way my mind was thinking. So that's going to be my flap going over the top of the bag doesn't stand out very much, but I do want to use that fabric. So I'm going to put a border of cerise straight across the bottom. So that's what the top of my bag is going to look like. And for my lining, I've cut two pieces of cerise fabric to the same size. This is the same cerise that's in that Mayday fabric bundle, by the way. In fact, all of those go with that fabric, don't they? You could do this in any colour. And one piece the same size as the flap including the extra bit so i may have to trim that down a little bit when i make it up okay so let's make up the flap first of all oh, while you're there i'm going to have a strap made out of webbing you could make your own or oh, pamela's in australia too um i've got about 35 inches of one inch wide webbing there 
um, I'm going to use a magnetic snap. I will just use one. They're kind of all bundled together to fasten it. And then I've also got, I'm going to put a slider on there and I'm using the rainbow sliders because I just think they match so well. I've got two D rings. These are all one inch sizes and I've got two swivel snaps as well. Okay, so that's that's all my bits and bobs, my ingredients, if you like. So let's put those all to one side. Um, just sort of new size, but shipping was five pounds. It goes on price, Linda, um, and that goes on what Royal Mail tell us their pricing code is. So that's where it comes from, I'm afraid. Uh, hello, Kathleen in Modesto in California. <gasps> Um, oh, Lisa's answering you, that's fine. Right, so let's do the flap first of all. So I'm going to put some bosal on the back of one piece of this, but I need to sew these two pieces right sides together first. Like so. So that's just going on the bottom, so I'll make sure I've got my fabric the right way round. And I'm using the side of my foot as a seam allowance. Oops, like so. So around about a quarter of an inch, maybe just a little over a quarter of an inch for my seam allowance. And then we'll press those open. Oh, while I'm just doing that, let me plug the iron. I like to bring the big iron down because um, Bosal likes a lot of steam and my little prim doesn't give it enough steam. So I'm plugging in the big one. Like that. That's it. Make sure it's switched on. Okay. So where's my foot pedal gone? There we go. Oh, I should have told you the size of the flap, shouldn't I? Sue. Um, so width wise it's 14 inches so it's two inches shorter than the width of the bag and length wise I've used measure it from the back so we've got nine inches for the top bit and then two and a half for the bottom bit oh not making a skirt Olive I know um, that's on the that's your project for Half Yard Club members. It's only come out today, so I thought I'd just, just show it to you so that you know what you've got when you get your emails. Right, let's give that a press, and then we'll have some bosal on the back of it. So it's going to be a nice size, this one, I think. Oh, big iron. Not used to the big iron down here. Right, so we'll give that a quick press, like so. I'm a steaming. There we go, let's get steaming. That's it, not quite hot enough yet. And then we'll have the bosal on the back. Um, you could use a firm interfacing. If you've got your, um, your Decaville, um, the firm Decaville, this would be a nice one to use it on because it's nice and big. I did make um, a bag using Decaville on Wednesday. Um, if you wanted to have a look at that, if you wondered what it was like. Um, on Facebook, so on this Facebook page, if you go to videos, there's not a picture of it there at the moment, but it was last Wednesday's. Um, or if you have a look on my website on debbieshawsewing.com, you'll see it on the videos there. Okay, so lots and lots of steam. I'm not touching the bosal bit at the moment because I don't want to get glue on the iron. So let's get it fixed first and then find my scissors. And we'll trim this down. And I'm just putting it on the outside. I'm not putting any kind of interfacing on the lining. And I always like to put it on the outside of the bag because that's what you see. And that's the bit that gives the, um, the bag a bit of structure. So now I've cut it down, I can iron right up to the edges. <laughs> Gina's got drilling going on. We have a pub just down the road from us and now people are socialising outside. It's like party time with the neighbours in the evenings. I could rather have the drilling. 
I'm just going to top stitch. Oh, that was hot. Nearly got me. Um, just along here on the... In fact, let's go on both sides, each side of the seam. And I love... I'll make my stitch a bit longer. I love top stitching on both so because the stitches really, really stand out. So again, I'm just going to use the edge of my foot as a guide. You can see you don't need anything special needle-wise or anything like that when you're sewing through the foam. If you're using Decaville or something a bit stiffer, then you may want to use a denim needle. Let's go along each side of that. So it's a lovely fabric to quilt through if you want to do some cross-hatch quilting or just um, diagonal stripes across this fabric would look quite nice, I think. Because the stitches really sink into it you can see there can't you they really stand out so that's looking nice so now let's take the opposite side of the fabric which is for the flap and I'm just going to give that a quick iron I don't like working with creased up fabric right um, and then we're going to put one half of the magnetic snap on here. That, that's pretty much the right size. Because I, I joined the two pieces at the on the front of the bag, that doesn't need trimming down, um, I wasn't sure of the exact size it was going to turn out to be. So the lining is a little bit longer. So we'll just trim that down like this. Right, now I'll need to put the magnetic snap onto the lining side. So I'm just going to fold this in half so I can find the center point here. And let's mark this. So I've got a heat erasable pen and somewhere down here, there we go. I'm going to use the thinner half of a magnetic snap and I'm going to place that about an inch and a half from the bottom. Don't put these too close to the edge because you're going to have a seam allowance there. So you don't want to be putting metal work where you're going to sew. So a little line either side here. I'm also going to take so I'm rummaging around for a scrap of fabric. I know I've got one. A little scrap of fabric to put on the back of where the snap's going to go just to make that a little bit more stable. So I'm going to use a squirt of 505 spray to hold that in place. That's going to go underneath there. And that's just going to help strengthen that hole that I'm about to make here. So make two tiny little slits across those holes. Best to make them too small than too big because you can always make the smaller hole bigger. Then the prongs of the, again, this is the thinner side of the clasp. So this is the one that doesn't have the magnet in it. And that's going to go in there and in there. That goes on the back. What's a carpal tunnel op, Hillary? That doesn't sound very nice. Oh, I hope you're okay. Um, managed to make it again. Samantha's a little bit late. Oh, well, I sent you all black. <laughs> Wrong camera, sorry about that. Um, right, thank you. That was my makeup for ages. Hello, Craft Angel. Sorry for missing any one of these. Um, Dennis, the um, the dragon behind me is going to be the secondary project for Half Yard Club members. So you're, you're going to be getting that on the 15th. These I'm sewing right sides together. So make sure that the magnetic snap is at the bottom. And I'm going to just put those together like that. We'll have a few clips, I think, just to hold those in place. Bigger one than that and then just sew all the way around. And I'm keeping the, the flap square because I think if I rounded off the flap, it wouldn't look right with that border at the bottom. So that's, um, that's my way of thinking with that one anyhow. All right. Oh, I'm glad you like the dragon. 
Just to mention as well, if you do want to join up for free for a whole month on the Half Yard Club, um, there is a new code to use. It's WELCOME in capital letters. So if you wanted to have a look around, um, go to halfyardsoundclub.com. I'll put these details in the description on YouTube. And when you go to the uh, to checkout, you will have to put all your details in there. That's just the way it works. When you go to checkout, um, there'll be a, a, a coupon box. So just type in WELCOME in capital letters and then you'll have a free month. Um, you will have an email after the month, or as it's coming up to when your month is finished, just to check if you wanted to carry on. Because if you don't want to, you're going to have to opt out. Right, down here. So it's quite, it is quite a quick bag, this one, even though it's quite big. Okay. And then we'll turn this the right side out when I've snipped across the corners. Um, trim a bit of that fat. That seems to have grown a little bit as I was sewing. So let's chop that fabric back to make my points nice and pointy. And then we'll turn it the right side out. If you have the time and the inclination, you could... Um, snip back the foam right up to the seam if you wish oh look i've missed so many of your comments um voil i would use maybe a silk needle something very fine um what's carpal tunnel then i'm sure somebody's probably explained that jones oh lots of you late this morning do you sell premium quilt wadding i'm afraid not at the moment we're out of stock of quilt wadding we've only got um um fusible fleeces and uh, foams and things at the moment so no wadding in stock oh thank you elaine right 27th birthday breakfast for the eldest well how do they get that age huh my youngest is 26. I don't know. How, I just don't know how that happened because he's, in my mind, he's a baby. I don't know what this young man's done with my little blonde, cheeky face son. He's turned into a big, blonde, cheeky face son. So there you go. Right, just pushing out the corners. I shouldn't use that at all. So do as you, do as you say, not as you do. So literally pushing out the corners. So you can see with something like this, it's you don't really need to trim back the foam. It's quite easy to sew. Um, what I am going to do is to top stitch around the edge because at the moment it's very bowy. So let's put the seam on the edge, lengthen the stitch again and just sew all the way around. So just folding the bows all over. And this is just going to keep it under control, keep it looking neat. And I do like a bit of top stitching. And there we go. Do you know, I'm just looking at your comments on the um, about the half yard club as well. It's it's getting really really big. Hi, Karina in Holland. Um, we have so many members now from certainly in Australia. There's loads in Australia. Um, and Canada and America and India and all, literally all over the world. It's lovely when you start writing comments and putting posts on there and seeing pictures and everything. It's, it's a proper community now, I think. You know, it's, it's nice to have... Um, I mean, it's nice to have lives like this. I, I, I love these lives on a Saturday morning and a Wednesday now, and I hope you, do, you love them as much as I do. Um, but I just, I just really enjoy feedback it's very different to the days when i learned how to sew and there was none of this technology around if you wanted to send something instant you send a fax um but I, I love all of that but with the club it's getting to be so much more that than just me bringing you projects because there is that interaction it's starting to feel really like a you know like a, like a proper club where we're getting to know each other okay so that's how we're looking on the front of the bag and you can see that quilting just really finishes it off that's the back of the bag if you do have 505 spray there is an idea for you look
spray a bit on the inside here, obviously pointing away from the sewing machine and yourself. And then that's going to hold it nice and flat while we continue to sew the bag together. So let's take the back of the bag. I'm not putting any pockets or anything in this one because we'll be here all day. And the flap is going to go right sides together over the back and make it central. So the two gaps each side here are the same distance apart. And we'll have again a couple of clips to hold that in place before we start to sew. Now just to mention if you um, if you have a walking foot then now is a good time to put it on because this will help to stop the fabric slipping as you're sewing. I'm just going to tack or baste in the seam allowance so I'm going right up to the largest stitch size on my machine and then just sew. So I'm smoothing out the fabric because ooh, it's a bit wobbly. Um, it will kind of crease with so many layers of fabric if it's not smoothed out a little bit and you can see how the machine slowed down a little bit because of all the layers so again I'm not worried about that line being wobbly because that's just a tacking stitch just to hold the flap in place while I continue to sew right so we'll have these two pieces now right sides together so if you wanted to move the flap out of the way as you sew, then you can do. So again, let's pop these together like so. And <laughs> Zell Zell just turned 10. I remember those days of having a 10 year old and it doesn't seem very long ago. Time goes so quickly, doesn't it? Um, and the baby's 50. I know when you've got middle-aged children, it's, it you feel old, doesn't it? I tell you when I, I felt the oldest, and I, I don't mind being old. I think we're, those of us who are growing old are very privileged to be able to grow old because so many people don't. Um, so I don't have a problem with getting old at all, but I really kind of felt my age when my, um, my sister's daughter, my niece, um, told me that she was pregnant. Now Hetty is now nine, so I'm going back ten years. And but she was the first grandchild from me and my sister. And because our parents aren't around anymore, you 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 kind of you're the most senior ones of the family now because parents have have gone. And then when your children have children, it almost seems to put you back up. Do you know what I mean? It makes you you know the older generation. So we're not just mums now; we're grandparents. And it, it was a bit of a Makes you feel ever so grown up and responsible, doesn't it, when you've got, got young children in the family? Wouldn't change a thing. <laughs> Elaine's just turned 71. Congratulations, still going strong. Right, so I'm just sewing all the way around the bottom three sides. So you're 62 and started sewing for the first time two months ago. Wow! It is a privilege to be a grandma, isn't it, Anne? I, I think <laughs> my my favourite word ever, I only realised almost six years, I guess she's going to be six at the end of this month, is, uh, is grandma. You know, so many people don't like being called grandma. Oh, it makes me feel old. And I, I'm very proud to be called grandma. Alana's just turned 40. Congratulations to you, same age as my son. Um, Jan, I'd actually, <laughs> if they're good enough, because a lot of the time, Jan's asking what I do with the bags when I finish them. I'll be honest, a lot of the time I rush these things through so much, they're not perfect enough to give away. The ones that are, um, for instance, there'll be some giveaways on Instagram, on my Instagram page, coming up soon because we've got 12,000 members, I'm going to give 12 away. An awful lot go to charity shops um, or people who have asked me for something to sell to raise money for charity and the rest of them are locked in insulation. <laughs> oh, six this month. Yeah, my, uh, my eldest granddaughter will be six on the last day of the month. Hopefully we're gonna be able to have a, a garden party. Right. Back to the bag. I'm going to cut out a corner one inch from the seam. 
So I'm just going to mark on here, one inch there, and one inch there, and chop it off. Oh, my husband does that, Jane. He's still 39. We've got a 40-year-old son, but he's still 39. And, and actually, for a long time, the kids thought that he was 39. They must have thought, I've got a toy boy. Um, oh, Sue was 41 when she had her first granddaughter. Oh, right. Let's open this up. Now I'm going to take the, the flap out of the way. 7.40 a.m. in Canada. Oh, Hel Helene, that's the, the competition for Instagram, or the giveaway on Instagram, is just on Instagram, because it's on Instagram that we've got the 12,000, so that's kind of what we're celebrating over there. I do do giveaways on YouTube occasionally, um, and on Facebook, but that one's just for Instagram, because that's what, that's what we were celebrating. Did I show you what I was doing there? I'm just so busy talking about grandchildren and stuff. Um, so uh, you, you must have seen this before, but where the where I've cut out the square bottoms, I'm just going to oh an awful lot of VAT, Sally, um, and pull that open so that the side seam sits on top of the base like that, and then sew straight across. I'm squishing the seams in opposite directions, and then so. So we have that. So let's turn this the right side out and we'll see how we're looking. Um, my parents are both 90. Wow. Do you know, when my, my mum died when she was 80, but when um, uh, we were younger, it got to this, because I've, I've got three kids, and it got to the stage where um, my, how did it go? My son was five, my daughter was 10, my eldest son was 20, I was 40, and my mum was 79. So I, for, uh, only for a couple of days, when, uh, in between the boys' birthdays, um, that, that's how it went. So it was five, 10, 20, 40, and she missed the 80 by a year. That would have been the whole family doubling up in ages. Anyway, that's by the by. I need to put the second half of the snap on. So I'm doing that at this point so I can gauge exactly where it's going to go. So if you fold the flap over now, bear in mind you're going to have a, a side bit here like that. That's where the, I'm going to put some straps on the side. So that's going to fold over like that. So I don't want to pull this really tight. I need to leave a little bit of room there to allow for that. So that sits quite nicely there. And I'm just going to put a mark where the snap is and then remeasure to make sure that that's going to sit in the center. So with 15, that's bang on at seven and a half. So this is going to be the fatter side of the snap. So let's take that and take that. I'll do the marks again. Now this time I'm going all the way through fabric and through bosal, so it's going to be quite chunky. And <laughs> Mary's a granny and a grandy. Do you know I was with my eldest granddaughter, I was grandpa for quite a long time. And it was actually quite disappointing when she started calling me grandma. I kind of, kind of grew to like being called grandpa. Um, so I'm leaning over like this. The, the writing on my uh, YouTube side of the screen is really small. Um, coffee? Oh, I'd love a coffee, yes, please. You've had orders already, you know. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, anybody else? Yeah, they want biscuits as well. Oh, some biscuits? Yeah, they're getting greedy now, you know. Oh, uh, get some. This Saturday morning a lot. Thank you. Okay. So spoiled. So that's gone on the front here. So I can double check that that's going to fasten and that's going to be rather fine and dandy like so. Now then we're going to put some little straps on the side. Where are we? Oh, better hurry up. I'm on at half past 12 on, on the other one, on search press. So I'm going to cut, that's about five inches off my strap. 
and thread this through a D-ring, whoops, and we'll have that facing down over the seam at the side here. And we'll do that each side. So that, where's my D-ring gone? Through a D-ring and over the seam at the side like so. See, I'm rushing now because I thought it'd be finished way in time. Let's do that. And then sew. And I'm going to sew from the inside of the bag because I find it easier. Why have you done that? Okay. So again, I'm just sewing straight get out of the way, straight across the top, close to the edge, just to hold it in place. It's all getting a bit thick now. Like so. I'm just looking actually if I've got some spare needles just in case I break one. Don't think I have up here. And that's going over the side there. If I break a needle, I won't be doing anything, will I? Okay. Then we'll make up the lining. And then we'll do the strap. So lining's going to be just the same as the outside, so I'm going to sew the bottom three sides, right sides together. This time I'll leave a turning gap in the bottom so I can turn the whole thing the right side out. That's something that I've found with a lot of bags that I've made when I've been sorting things out recently. A lot of them don't have the holes at the bottom sewn up. Because I get to this stage when I'm demonstrating something, I say, oh, I'll do that later. I never get round to doing it later. So there's my turning gap. <laughs> Mary, your tea might be cold if he's coming all the way to Australia with it. I know, do you know, um, Angela, I'd love a faster sewing machine. There must be some that are... Oh, where's the... Oh, is the sun gone? It's just looking a bit duller. Yeah, it's going to be raining soon. Make the most of the sun. Need to go out for a dog walk later. Uh, Lorraine wants a decaf. I always fancied a little sewing cafe. Right. Yeah, we could make a fortune, couldn't they? So I'm just cutting out the corner pieces as previous. And then we'll sew those corners again. Rock, rock. So again, just like before, open this out. I've got 40 inches of one inch wide webbing, Erica. Um, I think 30 inches, 30, 35 inches, sorry, 30 inches for the length of a strap is a reasonable length. So 30 inches for the actual strap and then um, an extra five inches for the, those little tab bits. So 35 inches should be absolutely fine. <laughs> sure, I'd never get any sewing done, would I? We'd be, we'd be having a, a cafe full of people just chatting. Great though, isn't it? Right. Morning, Deborah. I uh, can't read the comments that are on the sewing machine. Can the front be made black instead of white? On this one? No. Um, Sharon, I haven't got spiders in here. I, there was a moth. I'm sure I saw a moth earlier. But I've, I, I, had, I did go through a stage of having those, what, do, what were they called? Lace wings. They were flying around all over the place. Um, we get a lot of wasps and, and bees, which is a bit of a shame. So I always try and get those out. All right, what I'm doing is dropping the outside bag inside the lining so the right sides are together matching up the seams at the side and then I'm going to sew all the way around the top and I'm sewing from the inside just because that's what I you know let's do it properly I have got an accessory compartment and a free arm on here so we'll do it like that right 
I don't have a free arm on my sewing machine that I use it in the house. I'm kind of not used to using one, but most people do have one, so let's just do this. So again, just lining up the edges. Find it easier not to pin, but if you want to, that's entirely up to you. It does get quite thick, this, this Bosal malarkey. And it does want to fight back a little bit. So I'm taking control, push that out of the way. All I'm concerned about is where I'm actually sewing, not what's going on around here. So it's getting really bulky and in the way. Don't worry about it, just watch where the needles go in. That's all you need to concentrate on. No, Angie, I am using um, webbing straps. So I haven't made them on this one. If I'm going to make them, I'd cut my fabric four inches wide and then fold it in half and half again like a piece of bias binding. So that you end up with a strap that's one inch wide. One inch because the hardware I'm using is one inch wide. So it's nice, uh, nice that it fits. There we go. almost back to the beginning. I'm just stretching that out a little bit as I'm sewing because it is moving a little bit due to the lack of walking foot. Okay, let's turn this the right side out and see how we're looking, then we'll put the rest of the strap on. Hello, Sally. Um, hello from Germany, says Michelle on YouTube. Kerry, I have no problems reading the comments. They're all coming up rather nice and quickly and fast there. Right, I will sew the hole up at the bottom of the bag. So let's, no, I'll leave that off for a minute. Let's do this and sew that up just in case I end up giving it away. Oh, shorten stitch. I use a long stitch when I'm using anything like the Bosal or lots of interfacing because um, it does tend to make the machine run a little bit slower so the stitches are shorter because of the thickness of it. Okie doke. So lining now goes inside the bag. What I would do at this point normally, I don't think I'm going to have time to finish it completely would be to fold the top of the bag over and top stitch it just like I did with the with the flap. So that's that, that's that, and that's how the bag's looking. Um, now when you are using Bosal like this, it, it will be very wrinkly because you've just pulled it through a very small hole. Um, blast of steam or just iron over the top of it with steam and all of those wrinkles just disappear. So it's a dream to work with like that. Just push that corner out. Um, that top just needs sewing down there because the lining's lifting up because of the bosal. But I just wanted to show you how I put the straps on. So I have my slider. And should we use these? Yes, let's use those. Now then. So we're going to take one end of the strap and that's going to go through the slider and out that way. Okay, and that's going to be sewn down. Where have you gone? There you go. So let me just figure this one. Maybe you don't maybe I won't use those for speed. So that's going to go around there. That goes up right. I had to remind myself then. Now with the ends of these, I've got this back on the end, this webbing will fray. So you've got a couple of choices. Um, I'm just going to zigzag over the fold. So make sure that the threads, uh, the webbings come through enough so that that can go under the sewing machine foot. And I'm just going to zigzag straight over the top. Um, it's also an option to burn the ends of this if you just hold it above a flame. Obviously, be very careful using a flame, but it just melts the very end of it and stops it um, stops it unraveling. So that's like that. Make note of which side the seam is. So you've got one flat side like that, 
and that's the rough bit there okay let me see if i can get all of this in shot so obviously my bag's upside down i want the slider to be on the side here have the the raw bit facing outwards so pointing away from the bag take the other end of the strap make sure this is nice and flat and that's going to go through this end and then back through the slider again make sure this isn't twisted at all so we're going to go in here and back out again And that means that you've got the nice uh, look of the strap on the top, the fold bits underneath, and the bit that you've threaded through the center of the slider and sewn is on the inside. So again, on the back here, you've got a nice smooth line. That's not the most important thing in the world, um, but it's just it just makes it look a little bit neater. So then the second part here, now you do have a couple of choices. You don't have to go directly through here. If you wanted to put that onto a snap, you do that now, and then that just snaps on here. If you want to put a snap on this end instead of going directly through the loop, then you can do that here just in the same way. So again, let's go. Make sure this isn't twisted. Stitches, stitchy side up back through here then through the slider make sure that isn't twisted my loops on the end and back through here <coughs> just making sense that comes out there and then through here back over and then we're going to sew so that's if you want a detachable strap, that's the way that that's going to work there. So I've just lost everybody here for a second. I think I've touched my mouse and you all disappeared. There we go. So again, just zigzag straight over the edge. And back again for good measure. Um, and it isn't a pattern, it, I just kind of made it up as I was prepping this morning, so I don't actually have any sizes, but I, I do um, talk through sizes of fabrics right at the beginning, so if you want to watch back through the video, then that should help. I am, seeing as I've got the iron on, let's give that a quick press, because it will look nicer. Oh, am I out of water? Oh, there we go. And what you could do, get my board, is to actually box the base. That's it. And make this, this, the, set, the sides nice and square. So that kind of squares at the bottom a little bit. And then let's have my strap on here and that one on that side so again the only thing I really need to do and I do need to do that is to top stitch around there so there you've got a really good size bag <coughs> that apart from the cutting out took an hour to make less than an hour if you count for all the chat as well you could add pockets on the inside if you wanted to make it a little bit more practical so like an organizer bag but that's a nice big big enough bag to put folders and a4 sheet and things like that in it um, the fabric we do have on the website as well as all of the hardware and everything like that so if you wanted to have a look on debbyshaw.com debbyshawsewing.com and then you get all your stuff there and don't forget if you are a member of the half yard club then um, you will get your 10% discount when you use the code. Right, are we up to date? I've missed loads of your messages. I'm sorry, but I was, um, I really wanted to get that finished. Oh, I don't know what's going on there. Everyone's, oh, there you go. Um, oh, I'm glad you like it, Sharon. I will go through all of your messages afterwards. Thank you so much. I know it's been really, really busy. There's over 500 of you there right now on Facebook, which is very much appreciated. 
Um, that's a good idea, Sharon. And that's a technique that I'll have to put on there as well. We'll do a video of that one. Um, I'm glad you like it. Thank you very much. Yes, Debbie, I shall see you on Wednesday um, at two o'clock. Um, who was that? Kelly, I'm using an Elna 570A. It's a nice little compact sewing machine. It's actually my daughter's machine. Um, how much fabric for the bag? Oh, gosh. That would be, well, it's 16 inches, so it's half a metre. Half a metre of each one of those would be fine. Don't forget the Cerise one from that bundle. I d these don't last very long. That's why I keep bashing on about it. No picture on the website for them for some reason, but this is the Mayday bundle of five one-metre pieces of fabric, and that's the Cerise that I use there. But it goes, they go with anything, so don't miss out, because I get in trouble then. I'll be getting messages in a couple of hours saying, when's it coming back again? And I'm not sure if they are. Okay, um, I hope you've enjoyed that. I shall see you again on Wednesday on my website on Debbie Shaw's Sewing and on Facebook at two o'clock in the afternoon. If you can't make it then, or if you just want to watch on YouTube, I'll be back again next Saturday at, um, at 11 o'clock. So it's been lovely to have your company. From all of you all over the world, and... Um, I shall see you again very soon. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. It's just I'm going to sit and read them for half an hour. It's, that's really nice. Thank you very much. Um, I'll see you again on Wednesday. Bye bye.